Should you pronate your changeup? Should you cut your changeup? Should you just widen your fingers and give them the good old fork ball? Well, this video is going to dive into some of those details and discuss how to throw a changeup. What's up guys? My name is Chris Langan. I'm a pitching coordinator here at Driveline Baseball. In this video, we're going to discuss how to throw a changeup, specifically looking at some of the grips and cues we utilize here at Driveline Baseball. Before getting into how to throw a changeup, and as I've plugged in literally every other one of these videos, you can look at our introductory video on the basics of spin and movement if you somehow haven't yet. Additionally, we have a separate video which looks at the off-speed variations, which is good context prior to looking at how to throw the pitch. Let's first talk about some grip intricacies that are especially prominent in the changeup. We've detailed this in previous videos with the breaking ball and our fastballs if you'd like to see the grip intricacies for those profiles. We track this at driveline by looking at whether or not the thumb is tucked, can hardly do it, or flat, and have three separate coordinates to tag where the thumb is positioned on the ball. For the changeup, we see a variety of thumb positionings that can be useful for athletes. So it's not as simple as a fastball where it's typically just a zero call for thumb positioning. Some pitchers will feel comfortable bringing the thumb up to a 50 position, which is relatively rare, which is on the side of the ball and can help preset some pronation bias at release. Next up, we got to talk fingertip pressure. A lot of changeups are actually really gripped like this, just thumb and ring finger with the remaining fingers essentially just laying down on the ball for comfort. This lets you know that there's definitely some variety in whether or not the fingertip pressure is on the thumb, ring finger, middle finger. There's a little bit of differences there, pitcher to pitcher. So we track this at driveline, basically saying, hey, there's a little bit more on the ring, a little bit more on the middle, or it's neutral. Additionally, grip depth is another big thing to discuss with the changeup. Some athletes will find the pitch is more comfortable when thrown in the fingertips, whereas others may be capable of getting it deeper in the palm. Assuming comfort, some pitchers may manipulate the positioning of the ball here to either add velocity or take it off, depending on the context of the game. Athletes may also tilt their changeups either inward or outward, along with widening and narrowing the positions of the ring and middle fingers compared to the base grip. Next, let's get into some base grips for the changeup. At driveline, we typically identify changeups simply based off of their seam orientation. Changeup one is the two seam grip. This grip makes up nearly 60% of in-gym changeup usage. For pitchers who struggle to pronate, some type of two seam variant is almost always recommended. Typically, two seam variants provide the best opportunity for that non-magnus movement. Changeup two is the four seam changeup grip, which makes up the remaining 20% of in-gym usage. Changeup four is a split change variant where the index and middle fingers are simply widened on the baseball. This typically occurs on a two seam orientation or our base changeup one grip as well. Oftentimes an athlete will have a comfortable grip, but will need some additional cueing from the coach to get that pitch in the desired metric range they're looking for. Changeups are probably the most interesting pitch to cue because there's just so many routes to getting a good changeup, whether you pronate them, cut them a little bit, widen out the fingers. It's not as straightforward as say a fastball or a sinker where the routes aren't all that complex. There are really three changeup variants worth discussing here in this video. The turnover changeup, which is the classic pronation changeup, the non-magnus changeup, where key movement on the pitch occurs following release, and finally, there's the split changeup, or eventually, just converting to a traditional splitter or fork ball. For the turnover changeup, most of the cues will have to do with getting inside the ball at release. You can also simply cue the grip to try to preset that in a manner, but for the turnover changeup, we typically see pitchers simply have to pronate at release. For the turnover changeup, most of the cue specifics will be targeted towards getting inside the pitch and tilting the spin direction inward or towards the arm side, closer to three o'clock for a righty, closer to nine o'clock for a lefty. These pitches will also be relatively accurate on Magnus-only tracking technology such as Repsoto. Additionally, checking for the forearm and wrist and ensuring they're relatively loose is a good thing to look for as a coach, as if you're going to turn over the ball, it's typically tough to do if everything's tightened up right there. For the seam shifted wake or non-magnus changeup, cueing may not be as important as simply making sure you're targeting the right athlete for this changeup. The biggest thing to know is that attempting to pronate this pitch may actually make it worse. An athlete that can't get inside the ball at the release may just only be able to get behind the ball in which you're not gonna see really any of that non-magnus movement and the profile will probably be copycat and mimic their fastball. At that point, your only hope is really velocity separation or 80 grade command. And to be frank, if you have 80 grade command of it, 
why not make it even better on the stuff scale? Having a slight amount of cut is actually more optimal in this profile. And being able to evaluate when an athlete is biased towards supination and qualifies for this changeup is generally more important than various cues. In my experience, splitters typically require more trial and error with the grip rather than modifying a bunch of cues and thought processes at release. That being said, there are definitely times where a pitcher will need to inherently think about pronation or supination at release to obtain a more consistent profile on the splitter. It is also worth mentioning that splitter movement is generally a bit more sporadic relative to the other pitch types. So coaches and athletes should be a little bit skeptical to immediately provide cues and grip adjustments based off, say, a sample of three pitches. If you've never thrown a changeup before, my advice would be to identify whether or not you are a pronation changeup candidate or more of a non-magnus changeup candidate, as this will drastically affect how you cue and approach this pitch. This is a bit simplistic, but it's also probably best to just defer to a two-seam changeup grip to start. Again, I'm talking about a context where a pitcher has never thrown a changeup before. I'd stick this bad boy in their hands and until they say, hey, this isn't comfortable, or if they're maybe a little bit more advanced athlete uh, and they need to like figure out a pitch or else they're gonna have to retire, I'd say start with this, adjust from there. From here, I truthfully focus on getting some feel from catch play. If you're a pitcher with a fastball spin efficiency greater than 95%, there's probably a better chance that that pronation changeup may be the token for you. It also comes with the benefit of typically being a little bit easier to get velocity off of, as to get inside of the ball and utilize these fingers is typically going to be what actually slows down the ball at release. Thus, the pronation change kind of gives you two routes. You can still get the vertical depth, which is sick, but if you don't have it, you might have a shot at getting 10 miles per hour off the pitch as well, due to the way the pitch is released out of the hand. Again, make sure that you're a good candidate for this pitch and you can't actually pronate and get inside the baseball. If your spin efficiency is less than say 80%, you may be more targeted towards a seam shifted wake or non-magnus changeup. This pitch is a little more straightforward. Take a two seam grip and you can kind of let it rip and adjust and cue from there. If you are a sinker pitcher, which there's a good chance you are if you cut your four seamer because you'll have a better chance at non-magnus movement on your sinker, you're already gonna be fighting somewhat of an uphill battle to get that vertical break separation. So for those pitchers, you may be a lot more reliant on command, velocity separation, which is difficult as I just discussed before, or it might not be a bad idea to try a splitter variant. If you have their Rapsodo data or some pretty strong subjective evidence that you say either cut the ball a ton or stay behind it pretty well, start with one of those buckets that fits your strengths. For pitchers in the middle, there's generally a little bit more trial and error in deciding between say a turnover changeup, a non-magnus changeup, or of course, just going to the splitter. A lot of learning how to throw a good changeup has to do with trial and error, along with identifying which type of changeup you should throw. Mess around with some of these grip intricacies and base grips during catch play. Once you feel comfortable in catch play with that changeup grip you're utilizing, progress it towards the mound and then reset that feedback loop. You wanna make sure you aren't intentionally slowing down your body a bunch. Extending catch play out with some long toss or throwing a few on the way in is a good way to ensure you don't start forming this habit. And that's an introductory video of how to throw a changeup, or at least some of the things to take into account before you start trying to throw it yourself. Appreciate everyone for following along today. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below, as this video really got into more of the introductory phases of the changeup, and we'd love to answer some of your more complex questions in the comments. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe, and of course, make sure you hit that like button.